In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 14 to 16. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again I ask, Lord, that you would speak to everyone's heart as you have spoken to me. May your word be clear, Lord. May your Holy Spirit give the understanding of your word tonight. O oh God, spare no one. Speak to everyone. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know if I preached this message here in our ecclesia. I don't remember preaching this here. I preached this for the first time at the Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church, All Grand Homecoming, on December 28, 2012, at the PICC Plenary Hall. Tonight, I'm going to preach to you on the subject I entitled, Our Legacy, Our Heritage, The Greats, of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach throughout the month on the Lord Jesus because this is a pastor's month and I do believe that uh, it should not be me that ought to be honored but it must be the real godly and perfect pastor whose name is Jesus. Pastor Jesus. Amen? He was the one who pastored the first ecclesia. And he is our pastor. So tonight, allow me to preach to you this message, our legacy, our heritage as Baptists. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Charis or charis in the Greek means goodwill, loving kindness, merciful kindness, or as many of you know, the unmerited favor of God. Grace is charis in the Greek. And grace is one of the most misunderstood words in the Bible. The Baptist people are the people of the grace of God. The Baptist people are the people of the grace of God. The Baptist people are the people of the grace of God. Now, you're a Baptist. You should know that. We believe in the doctrines of grace. Grace that takes away all the efforts of man. 
the works of man whereby he thinks he will be acceptable to God. Nobody is acceptable except by the grace of God. Let me repeat that. Nobody is acceptable except by the grace of God. Everything that we have is a gift. Everything that we have is a gift. Whether it be talent or abilities or intelligence, it's a gift. A gift according to His grace. A gift according to His grace. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 7 says, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. So, don't be proud of yourself. Don't be proud of whatever gift that God gave you. Don't be proud of whatever intelligence or talent and abilities God gave you. Do you know why? Because they are all gifts according to the grace of our Lord. It didn't come from you. It didn't come from your parentage. It didn't come from your genes. It came from God. It is grace. You know, unsaved people will never understand that. You know that? In fact, saved people don't even understand it. How much more the unsaved ones? They will not. And they cannot. That's the reason why nobody can be proud by reason of his talents, abilities, and intellect. I thought many, many years ago when I was young that I cannot preach. I like to speak, but I don't like to preach. I thought I can't. You know, I, I kid a lot. I joke a lot. I am a funny person many, many years ago. It's the only time in my life I'm so serious. But I'm, but, but I'm a funny guy. I'm always the morning star of any crowd. I make them laugh. I'm the life of a crowd, you know. They always enjoy my company. But preaching, that's not my line. It was the Lord that taught me to preach. It was the Lord that taught me to teach. It is grace. Everything that we do to show off or even entertain rather than to glorify the Savior and magnify His name is of the flesh and not of the Spirit of God. Even if you think you can praise God for that. That's why movie stars can be saved in this ecclesia, but they won't last long. Do you know that? Because either... They get out of this agesia or they, they stop acting. Why? Because the Bible has firmly and conclusively tell us that you do not use your talent for the world. You use it for God. You use it for His glory. So that even the intellect and the talent you have and the abilities you've got that you use in your studies, that you made good in your studies, and you graduated, 
and you're using it now in your career, all of those are the grace of God and because of that, your career must be dedicated to God because it was God who gave it. Now, look here. This can only be understood by God's people, by God's children. Amen? By you and by me. It can never be understood by those who are outside the fold of God. In Romans chapter 12 and verse number 3, it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, ano sabi? Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. There are many times in the Tagalog Bible, John, the screen. Although I'm not using it because it's not King James. Pero marahil, makikita natin ang ibig sabihin niya. Na sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. Alright? Meron ba? Wala. Basahin mo nga rito yung Tagalog niyan. Para maunawaan ng lahat sa inyo. Ang ibig sabihin ng verse na ito. Romans 12.3 sa Tagalog, sapagkat sinasabi ko sa pamamagitan ng biyaya na sa akin ay ibinigay sa bawat tao sa inyo na huwag mag-isip sa kanyang sarili ng totoong may, mas matayog siya kaysa sa nararapat na kanyang isipin. Yun. Malino ba? Huwag mag-isip sa kanyang sarili na mas magaling siya kaysa sa nararapat niyang isipin. Kundi mag-isip na may kahinahunan, ang sabi, but to think soberly. Ayon sa kasukatan ng pananampalataya na ibinabahagi ng Diyos sa bawat isa according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Kung yan ay bibigyan ko pa ng susok, ayon, ayon sa sukat ng pananampalatayang ibinigay sa iyo. Sapagkat Iba-iba ang sukat ng pananamparatayang ibinibigay sa bawat anak ng Diyos. Naunawa niyo? Alright na. Now this is a very important verse, folks. When you speak of the talent and the abilities you have. Because the tendency is always to be proud of your talent. Am I right? Come on now. Am I right? The tendency is always to be proud of your ability because you thought it came from you. Huh? Kaya nga, ang mga, ang, ang halos lahat, sila man ay anak ng Diyos o hindi. Anong sinasabi? Ah, magaling ito sapagkat nagmana yan sa akin o nagmana sa tatay o nagmana sa lolo o nagmana kahit kanino. Ito, wala tayong pinagmanahan sa ating mga magulang kundi kasalanan. Hello? Hello? Kaya wag natin pag-uusapan kung saan nagmana. Alright. Oh. Maaaring ipagmalaki ng misis ko na ang kanyang anak na si Rich ay nag hindi nagmana kundi nagtapos ng master's degree ha, sa isang kilalang kilala na universidad na hindi kayang pasukin ng sino man. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Ha? At nung siya'y nagtapos, sumakumlaude. 
Masarap isipin ng aking may bahay, nagmana sa akin yan. O siguro, pwede ko rin sabihin, kayo na ba nagmana sa music yung anak ko? Pagka minsan, ang mga magulang nag-aagawan ng pinagmanahan. Pero pag pangit ang anak mo, ayaw mong sabihin nagmana sa'yo. Tama, mali. Ngayon, ang karotohanan niyan, ito, wala tayong binana sa ating mga magulang mula kay Adan at kay Eva, kundi kasalanan. Nasa Bible ba yon? Saan? Romans? Saan? Romans ba? Ha? Ha? De, Psalm 51.5 says that in sin, di ba? Psalm 51.5, ano nakalagay? In sin did my mother conceive me. So nakalagay ba? Yo? I was shapen in iniquity. Hinubog ako sa kasamaan. And in sin, did my mother conceive me. Yun ang minana natin. Naunawa niyo? Oh, Ano pa nakalagay? Ha? Ano pa nakalagay? Romans 5.10. Romans 5.10 ba yun? Kano sa Romans 5.10? Ano nakalagay sa Romans 5.10? Romans 5.12. Ano nakalagay? Romans 5.12. Ha? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death pass upon all men for that all have sin. So anong, pinana, anong minana natin sa ating mga magulang? Galing ba? Talent ba? Husay ba? No. Kasalanan. So, baguhin natin ang kaisipan natin tungkol dito. Na kung ano man ang galing natin ngayon, kung ano man ang talent natin ngayon, kung ano man ang success natin ngayon, yan ay nanggaling sa biyaya ng Diyos. At pag yan nasa isip ninyo, kailanman, hindi ka magiging mayabang. How then should we value the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Why do we attribute everything to His grace? Binanggit ko na, the word grace in the Greek is charis. It means goodwill. It means loving kindness. It means merciful kindness. It means the unmerited favor of God given to us. Do we deserve His favor? No, we don't. That's why it is grace. Amen ba? Yeah. Why? It is because, number one, our salvation is by His grace alone. Our salvation is by His grace alone. Ephesians 2, 5 to 8, even when we were dead in sins, tayo sa simula ay ano? Ay patay sa kasalanan. Anong doktrina yan? Total depravity of man. Tayong lahat ay patay sa kasalanan. Amen ba? Yeah. Amen ba? Yeah. All right. Okay. Had quickened us together with Christ. Who does the quickening? The Spirit of God. 
By grace, ye are saved. Nakita nyo? By grace, ye are saved. The grace of God, the grace of God was given to us that when we were dead in sin, we were quickened by the Spirit of God. No, 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 Now look, I do not claim it to be easy to be understood, folks. My only appeal to God is that the Holy Spirit will make you to understand. Because I cannot make you to understand. I cannot. I might use all the simple words. I might use all the great words. I might use everything to explain this. But it's still again the Spirit of God that gives the understanding. You know what's that? That's grace. Verse number 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine what the grace of God did to us? Hindi lamang na tayo ay patay sa kasalanan, tayo ay ginising mula sa pagkamatay sa kasalanan, all right? Quicken, oh, ng Espiritu ng Panginoon, at dahilan dyan, sa pangamin ng biyaya, tayo yung nangaligtas, kundi tayo ay itinaas. Okay? At tayo ay pinaupo na kasama ni Kristo Jesus in heavenly places. What's that? It is a place in which God is glorified. It is a place in which we live godly lives. Heavenly places. In Christ. We are no longer earthly. I would like you to understand this statement. We are no longer earthly, although we are earthy. In verse number 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Look at that. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness. Grammar would think it to be a redundancy of words. But it's not. Ano yung redundancy? Grace and kindness. But it is not. It is the word of God. And God is always using words To tell us that it is not ours, it is not us, it is God. Totally, purely, fully God. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Nalinaw, di ba? Sa biyaya, tayo ay nangaligtas sa pangamagitan ng pananampalataya at hindi ng ating mga sarili. Ito ay kaloob ng Diyos. Ano ang kaloob ng Diyos? Ang pananampalataya, hindi ang grace. Hindi ka maaaring Manampalataya kung hindi ibibigay sa iyo ang pananampalataya. Sapagkat ang pananampalataya ay galing sa Diyos. Yun ang, pina, yun ang kaibahan natin sa whosoever will. At doon sa whosoever won't.
Pag tayo'y kinakausap bilang mga sovereign grace people. Okay? So, nakikita po ninyo rito. Kaya hindi, according to the book of Romans, chapter 11, hindi mo pwedeng pagsamahin ang grace at ang works. Kaya nga ang sabi, ha? Romans 11, 6. And if by grace, then is it no more work. Salvation to ah. Ang kaligtasan. And if by grace, then is it no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Intindihin natin. Karamihan na mga Christian churches at mga Christian religion, kahit na hindi Christian, ang kanilang paniwala sa kaligtasan ay sa pamagitan ng gawa. Tama? Hello? Kahit ang Pentecostal. Kasi pag naniniwala tayo sa grace ng Panginoon, hindi ka pwedeng maniwala na nawawala ang iyong kaligtasan. Tanong, Pastor, therefore, yung pong mga tao na tumatanggap sa Panginoon by faith, pero nawawala ang kanilang kaligtasan kapag nagkasala sila, sila ba'y ligtas? Hindi. Why? Because it borders to works. Kung inyong titingnan yung Romans 11.6, nangunawa niyo ba ako? Ha? Kung nakalagay dito at nahiniwala tayo, kung yan ay biyaya, hindi na yan sa pamagitan ng gawa sapagkat kung yan ay gawa, ang biyaya ay hindi na biyaya. Naunawaan niyo ba? Hello? Hey! Naunawaan niyo? Do you think that the doctrines of grace is easy to understand? Listen more. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, 2 Timothy 1.9 Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to His own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Titus 2.11 For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. Ang biyaya ng Diyos na nagdadala ng kaligtasan ay nagpakita sa lahat ng tao. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? Unang-una, our salvation is by His Grace alone. Kung datagdagan ko, plus nothing, minus nothing. Mas naunawaan, di ba? Plus nothing, minus nothing. So that when you came to Christ and said, Lord, save me. The only thing that you brought to Him is your sin. And God took that sin and He washed your sins away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you believe it by faith. Number two. Oh, ikaw yung naligtas na, di ba? Pag nasave ka na, pwede ka na maglikod, Right? sapagkat hindi ka pwedeng maglingkod 
kung ikaw ay walang personal relasyon sa Diyos. At yung personal relasyon sa Panginoon ay nakukuha lamang sa kaligtasan. Kaya nang umaga, ipinaliwanag ko yung new birth, yung born again. Okay. Therefore, number two, our service is by His grace. Ang ating pagilingkod ay sa pamamagitan ng kanyang biyaya. 1 Corinthians 3.10 According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built it thereupon, thereon, but let everyone take heed how he built it thereupon, according to the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 6.1 We then, as workers together with Him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Hebrews 12.28 Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Now look, you can serve God all you want. You can think you're serving God all you want. But if it is not by the grace of God, your service will never be accepted by Him. Our service is by His grace. Kaya nga alam nyo, binabago natin yung statement. Yung bang, I am working for God. That would not be the right statement if you're looking at grace. The right would be, God is working through me that I might work for Him. Whether it be witnessing, singing, playing the instrument, or whatever it is, the moment you become proud, of who you are, grace is taken away. Our service is by His grace. Thirdly, ourselves are by His grace. Ourselves are by His grace. Tayo mismo, tayo ay sa pamamagitan ng biyaya ng Panginoon. Tayo. Yung pagkatao natin, yung pagbabago natin, kung sino tayo ngayon ay grace ng Panginoon. Amen ba? Kaya sinasabi natin, we are sinners saved by grace. Ang buhay natin, o oh, kung bakit ligtas pa tayo, kahit nagkakasala tayo, grace. Amen. Kung bakit Ligtas tayo, magkasala ka, papatawarin ka, grace! First Corinthians 15.10 Anong sabi ni Paul? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You have to accept me as I am by the grace of God. Husband, don't try to change your wife. You can't do it. You ask the Lord to change your wife. And wives, don't try to change your husband. You can't do it. You ask the Lord to change your husband. And parents, you cannot change your children. 
you can only kneel down before God and pray and say, Lord, please change my son. Lord, change my son. Why? I can change him. I cannot make him a beautiful boy. Only God can do that. Kanina may kausap ako dito na nanay na nag-aten sa atin, nag-profess. Kasama yung anak niyang galing sa Jeddah. Is, is he here? Yung galing sa Jeddah, wala. And then the mother was saying that ang anak po namin ay napakabuti. Ang sabi ko sa niya, it is because he knows the Lord. Sabi niya, kasi po, tinuruan po namin siya. Hindi. Hindi niyo tinuruan ng nat anak niyo na maging mabuti. Ang salita ng Panginoon ang nagturo sa kanya. Sabi ng anak, Amen po. Kasi, Luca, nung nagbago ang anak mo, ngayon sasabihin mo, tinuro namin ng bata yan? Ano ka? Ang galing mo? Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Huwag, huwag kayo magmamalaki mga magulang na kayo ang nagturo sa mga batang yan na maging mabuti. Sasabihin ko sa inyo, pag yung mga anak niyo, turo ng mga batang na sa harapan ko, hindi naunawaan lahat ang sinasabi ko eh. Pero you know what the Holy Spirit does to these people here? These young people here? The Holy Spirit can make them to understand in their young minds. Expose mo yan sa salita ng Panginoon. Always. Expose them. And God will work in their lives. Amen? And God will change their lives. Do not, parents, listen. Do not make it your goal to change your children. Make it your goal to expose them in the Word of God. Make it your goal to be faithful. Make it your goal to bring them to God's house. But do not make it your goal to change their lives. Because you cannot. Expose them to the word of God. I'm not saying expose it to me. No. This is not my teaching. This is not what the, my mind. This is the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says train up a child in the way. He should go. When he gets old, he will not depart from it. It might be for some time. Your child will, leave, will, will get out of the way. It might be for some time. They will go to the world. But you know what? Because the seed has been planted in their own hearts. And they know who they are. You know what they will do? They will come back. Now. If you have a son who makes a profession of faith, he goes back to the world and do everything he can. He begins to enjoy it and he does not care about God. Let me tell you this. He's not saved. He has not known Christ as his Savior. He might even be here for a long, long time. But being in the church for a long, long time does not guarantee salvation. Again, 1 Corinthians 15.10 says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Tignan mo ha? Parang yabang, di ba? Ano yung yabang doon? 
Ha? Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, but I labored. Ha? Nagtrabaho ako. Nagsakripisyo ako. Ha? Nang mas matindi at mas parami kaysa sa kanilang lahat. Pero tinan nyo, ang sabi, yet not I. Hindi ako. But the grace of God which was within me. Yes! Pwede kong sabihin, I labored more than many of you. Ako pwede kong sabihin sa inyo eh. Am I right? I labored more than many of you, than you all. I labored the longest than you all. Yet not I, hindi sa akin, hindi ako, kundi ang biyaya ng Panginoon na nasa buhay ko. Hindi ako nagpipreach sa inyo ngayon upang ipakita sa inyo ang galing ko. Wala akong galing, kundi ang galing ko nang gagaling sa biyaya ng Diyos. Ang pinagmamayabang ko, hindi ang alam ko. Ang pinagmamayabang ko, ang biyaya ng Diyos sa aking buhay. Sapagkat kung wala ang biyaya niya sa aking buhay, walang kwentang tao ako. Hello? Kung wala ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa aking buhay, walang kwentang tao sa Bene Abante. Siya man ay maging congressman o maging senador o whatever it is, walang kwentang tao pa rin siya kung wala ang biyaya ng Panginoon sa akin, mga kapatid, mga minamahal, mga anak sa pananampalataya. It's by the grace of God that I'm here tonight. It's by the grace of God that I can preach to you tonight. It's by the grace of God I can declare to you that I'm saved. It's by the grace of God alone. Naiginig kayo? Number four. Maharin dito ako uminto. Marahe pa yun. Our sacrifices are by His grace. Our sacrifices are by His grace. I believe that you cannot make sacrifices without the grace of God. I was able to make those sacrifices because of the grace of God. And the, and, and, and the most appropriate verses on that is 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 8. Ito, sabi. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of what? Come on now, say it. Of what? Of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Look now, ah. Ah, look now. Ang biyaya ng Diyos na ibinigay sa mga eklesiya ng Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Now, let me ask you, what is the grace of God there? The grace of God here is not the great trial of affliction. The grace of God here is that despite the great trial of affliction, they have the abundance of joy. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Niriribil ng Panginoon sa atin ito unti-unti. Sa akin lang, balay kong binabasa ito. Eh. At habang binabasa ko ito, ha, every time, every time, may niriribil ng Panginoon sa akin. Eh. Ano yung niriribil ng Panginoon sa atin dito? Na itong Macedonian believers, hindi nila pinansin ang great trial of affliction because 
the grace of God gave them the abundance of joy. Hello. I want to have that. I want to have that kind of an attitude that when I am suffering, I don't actually care because the grace of God is there. What is your attitude when you are financially broke? Come on now. Be honest. What is your attitude when someone in your family becomes a problem? What is your attitude when you're afflicted with a sickness that you cannot afford? What? You say, pray, more, pray for me, pastor. Is it because you're sick or is it because you're worried? What is the motive of that request for prayer? Hello? Nakukuha niyo ba sa nasabi ko? Pastor, Pray for me. Napakalaki po ng problema namin sa company. Why? Is it because of the problem you have? Or is it because you're nervous? Yun ang ibig sabihin nung how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy. Can you say, Lord, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm, not, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for this problem. I don't deserve this problem, but I'm going to pray for this problem. If the Lord wants to continue to get this problem to me, so be it. I accept it. If I have to go back, if I have to go back to being down there, I'm willing. Until such time you can honestly say, I can go back to being down there. You have not experienced the grace of God. And by the way, hello, by the way, your success now, you did not start with that. You started from here. Hello. And the grace of God will tell you, I have the abundance of joy. I don't care. If I go back to where I used to be. Haven't you heard me say it so many times? If I need to go back to 1975. Of which I only have 10 pesos in my pocket to live. Preachers, I can go back. But you cannot. You'll backslide. You'll get out of God's will. You're going to blame God. You're going to blame somebody else. You're going to blame people. But never yourself. You do not know.
the grace of God. I, I consistently, every three months, have my blood test. Because my doctors want to see what's my condition. Religiously, every three months, I go to the vampire to extract blood from me. To find out my condition. About two weeks ago, my friend, classmate, who is also diabetic as I am, called me up and said, You know what, Benny? My creatinine level is 284. And the doctor is suggesting to have a dialysis. I hate that. But I have to accept the fact that maybe one day, maybe one day, I'll have that. So well, you know, in a way, I kind of worry a little bit, a little bit. I have to have my blood test now. I want to find out if my creatinine level has gone high. When I had my blood test, it's normal. And I had a sigh of relief. My doctor told me, you don't need to worry about that. To us, as humans, we tend to worry, isn't it? Yeah, that's normal. We tend to worry. That's why the Word of God is teaching us, hey, listen. God might allow afflictions to come to you, but His grace will give you the abundance of joy. So that you will know that God is there. God is working. That you could still say like what children sing. He's still working on me. It says, and their deep poverty. Notice it. And their deep poverty is not just plain poverty. It is not just simple poverty. It is deep poverty, folks. Malalim na kahirapan. What is the grace of God there? Abounded unto the riches of their liberality. That's why Kahit na sila in deep poverty, it did not affect their giving. Why? Because their heart abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Paano ang isang tao na napakalalim ng kanyang kahirapan, ng kanyang karukhaan? Eka nga, ano? Ha? Ay sasagana. Sayaman, 
ng kanyang kaluwagan sa pagbibigay. Paano? Bakit hindi ka nagbibigay ng first fruit? Sapagkat so, nasabi ng flesh ko, flesh mo, hindi mo kaya yan. Kulang pa nga sa'yo, pero mo. Tama? Why don't you test God if He will provide? By giving sacrificially. If He does not provide, I challenge you, don't believe Him anymore. But I'm going to tell you, He always provides. It might be in the nick of time, He still provides. It might be beyond my expectation, He still provides. It might be something that I have never even seen. He still provides. Magkaroon ka lang ng puso, ng biyaya ng Panginoon, that you abound unto the riches of your liberality. Ang yaman na tinatamasa ko ngayon, kung gusto ng Panginoon, iwan ko yan, iiwan ko yan. Hindi mahirap sa akin gawin yan. Sa'yo, ano nga sabihin mo? Sayang naman. Kaya nakikita nyo, ang mga hindi cheerful givers, palaging hirap sa buhay. Palagi yan. Naikinig ka ba? Naikinig ka? Ikaw yun eh. Pero ang cheerful giver, kahit na wala yan, hindi nahihirapan sa buhay. Why? Because number one, He has the abundance of joy. Number two, He abounds unto the riches of His liberality. Ito pa ang grace ng Panginoon. Verse 3, For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power. Sacrifices, ha? Sa kanilang abilidad. Sa kanilang abilidad. Isinusulat ko sa inyo, sabi ni Paul, ha? Oo. Oh, kahit na higit pa sa kanilang kakayanan, willing sila. Ano yan? That's the grace of God. You know, I live in pain every day. From here to my feet. I have spondylosis. I have scoliosis. I have back pain. I have osteoarthritis. My muscles have been destroyed because I was opened twice. And sometimes when you cannot anymore endure the pain, you're asking God, Lord, take me home. Not the country road. (laughs) 
Is that not sometimes what you say? But seemingly God seemingly wants to tell you, hey, I allow that pain to come to you so you will experience my grace. Okay. The newest pain I have is meron ako dito sa aking left foot na kapag nagkamali ng angat, biglang sumasakit yan na parang pako na tinuturnilyo. Dito. Minsan nitin ko, wala naman akong sugat. Wala sugat. Wala akong sugat. Here. Wala. As in wala. Pero pag nagkamali, parang pa ako na itinulak. Alam niyo yun? Painful, folks. And there are times I am so fleshly, I want to ask God, why? <laughs> if you begin to understand the grace of God, you're not going to ask why in anything that happens to you. You'll accept it. You'll just ask the Lord to give you sufficient grace. And upon grace, verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Ano yun? They took an offering. Walang-wala sila. Hirap. Afflicted. They still took an offering for Paul. And compelled him to accept that. Ayaw tanggapin ni Paul eh. Sapagat alam ni Paul ang kalagayan nila eh but still compelled Paul to accept that. You know, there's a big difference between us giving in abundance and us giving from nothing. To most of us, we give out of our abundance. I would think tonight that there are few widows here that give everything. Am I right? Because some of you people, you're afraid to lose a lot if you give all. <laughs> Come on. Was the widow afraid to lose a lot when she gave all? She gave everything, folks. That's a one-year income. She gave everything. And she was not afraid to lose all because she knew, she knew that she has a God that is gracious. Huwag mo sasabihin sa akin, mahirap ka, sinungaling ka. Kung di ka pa sinungaling, plastic ka. Nakakita ka ba na mamalimos doon sa kanto? Na may rilos? At mayroong quintas na gold dito? 
Palimus nga po ng pagkain. Ano gusto mo sabihin? Pati mo, kainin niyo rilos mo. Ganon kayo, ang iba sa inyo. Ano pa ang grace? Verse 5. And this they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. Unang-una, binigay nila ang kanilang mga sarili sa Panginoon. At pagkatapos, sa mga apostles, sa mga pasto, by the will of God. Verse 6, In so much that we desire titles that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as she abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge, in all diligence, in your love to us, see that she abound in this what? Grace also. What is that grace? Giving sacrificially. Tithing is not grace giving. Hello? It is when you reach a point in your life that you're able to give sacrificially. That is grace giving. Giving out of our abundance is not grace giving. Hope you understand that. And verse 8, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Ang sabi ni Paul, kapag natutunan mo na ang grace of giving, hindi ko na kinakailangan pang utusan ka. Tama? I speak not by commandment. Subalit, so, dahilan din naman sa iba. Forwardness, ha? Ano yun? Sa iba na umaabante sa giving. Sa iba na ginagawa na ito by grace. Nagsasalita ako sa inyo, alright, not by commandment, pero sinasabi ko sa inyo, sapagat nakikita ko sa iba, ha, na ginagawa na itong biyayang ito. Oo. Ibig sabihin that they are proving the sincerity of their love. I want to stop there. Because to some of you, it's so hard for you to swallow everything I said. My only appeal is that I trust and pray if you are truly a child of God, that you will fully understand the grace of God. Let's all stand. Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. Only you, kau lang, ang nakakaalam kung paano ka kinausap ng Panginoon dito. Ikaw lamang ang nakakaalam in what area of the preaching you heard tonight that struck you. You're the only one that knows that, not me. And therefore, I asked of you, to deal with God tonight in His altar.